we're starting a new paper. This is the math lab paper one, right, for DBE, right, um, for November 2022. Okay, let's just quickly read through the instructions. I know we always do this, but I always want to reiterate to you, right, round off all your final answers, so don't round off when you are working, right? Diagrams are not necessarily drawn to scale, and then always indicate your units. Okay, so just importantly, always make sure that you have your annexures because they will come up in your uh, questions. Let's look at question one. Question one, these questions are generally finance related. They're generally quite straightforward, but this is where you want to sort of bank marks, right? So let's make sure that we're banking these marks. Martha needs to buy school uniforms for her son and daughter. She compares the prices of three different stores as shown in table one below. Okay, so here's the items, store A, B, and C, and there's the prices. Okay. Again, as I always say, don't spend huge amounts of time going through all of the data. Just make sure that you kind of understand it briefly and then the questions sort of steer you towards understanding. So let's see what it says here. Use table one above to answer the questions that follow. Okay. Identify whether the prices given in table one are numerical or categorical. Now, this is something that often trips students up because they want to say, oh, these are categories and then these are numerical because they're price because they're amounts they're numbers but what does the question say it says whether the prices are numerical or categorical well the prices have to be numerical right because they're numbers right so don't make sure that you're reading your questions carefully so the answer here is numerical it doesn't ask for a reason it just says identify so you don't now need to go give a whole essay about what's happening right you just say 1.1.1 1. 1. 1. 1, and you just say numerical and you just got yourself two marks Okay, remember always to be labeling your questions correctly. 1.1.2, arrange in ascending order. Remember, ascending means getting bigger. All the prices given for store B. Okay, so it means we're going to go from the smallest to the biggest. Okay, so the smallest here is 11.99. Okay, I'm just going to move it here so that you can see. 11.99. What is the next biggest there? It is 18.99. Then it is 39.99. 39.99, then it is 44.99, right, I'm just ticking these off as I go, 54.99, then it's 159.99 and 169.99, okay, importantly, right, we're going from the smallest to the biggest, because that is what ascending means, so we're going, we're doing pretty well, right, got ourselves some easy marks here, let's just keep going. Name the store that sells the cheapest gray shorts, okay? So we go here, we say, okay, gray shorts, look across, the cheapest is store B, because it's 39,99. Store A is the most expensive, store C is kind of in between. So the answer here is store B. So it's literally just getting you to, to show that you understand what's being displayed. Here is where we get into a little bit more calculation questions, okay? Calculate the price for a pack of white school socks at store C. Okay, so white school socks, that's where we're looking there, right? But this is for five packs. It only wants for one pack. So we have to say 85,99, right? 85.99. And we have to divide that by five, right? Why do we have to divide by five? Because it only asks for one pair. So 85.99 divided by five, and that is. 17.20 rand. Now, why did I make it two zero? Remember with currencies, you only ever have two decimal places. Always put in your currency sign. Because the third decimal is eight and that's above five, we round up and it becomes 20. Okay, so just remember that. Let's now look here. Determine the missing value P if Martha bought all the school items as advertised at store A. Okay, so basically it's not a difficult exercise, you're just adding all of these up. So because it is two marks, you have to do a little bit of working out. So literally just go and write all of those things out. So you're just going to say here, 110 plus 163 plus 186, it is store A. Okay, make sure you read that correctly, I almost did the wrong things. 40.5 plus 85 plus 349, or she went to the expensive shop. Okay. And you write all that down. All you need to do now, pop that in your calculator. Biggest thing here, make sure that you type it in correctly. 110 plus 
Okay, make sure you put that in correctly. And your answer is, remember your RAND value, 1251.50. Remember, always two decimal places. If there isn't a second one, it always means it's zero. Okay, so just put that zero in and we're done. I know that looks like a, it's supposed to be a one. Sorry, that's my poor handwriting. Okay, perfect. Let's move on now to our last question and get this video done. The probability of selecting store C to buy all the school items is 0, 0,33333. We call that recurring in mathematics. It means it goes on forever. Define the term probability in the given context. So if in the given context, remember whenever we're talking about probability, it's always the likelihood, right? So in this context, it's the likelihood of choosing store C or of selecting store C. It's not a difficult question, but it is the likelihood. So that's the biggest thing. The word there is likelihood or chance. I'm just going to write there as well. Chance of selecting store C. Okay, that's where your one mark would be. That's where your second mark would be. Perfect. They sometimes ask definitions, so make sure that you're familiar with these terms. Last question. Write down this probability, this one here, as a percentage rounded to the nearest whole number. Okay, so firstly, it's a decimal. How do we convert decimals to percentages? Well, we times them. How many threes are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You times it by 100. That gets to percentages. So it's going to be 33.1234. 1, 2, 3, 4. If you don't believe me, put that into your calculator. I just can do it in my head. We're not done because it says to the nearest whole number. Right, this is not a whole number. Whole number means no decimals, right? So we look here at the first decimal. It's below four. We round it down. So our answer is 33% and we are done. Okay, so this question, not difficult, but you do need to be very careful in the way you're reading and interpreting questions. Let's move on to the next question. That just needs to be a one. 